The New York Times reports that 200 Iraqi civilians have just been killed by U.S. military airstrikes after Hanif abdul -Rakib. And a man on television calls it unfortunate yet inevitable collateral damage. And I wonder what it is that turns mourning into a metonym or a proclamation of conjecture. And I read his bio and I see that he has a wife and I can't imagine he would call it inevitable if her body were pulled from the quiet implosion of scattered rubble. And I see that he has a son and I can't imagine he would call the boy who bears his name collateral in someone else's war. And I see that he has a daughter and I think of what it might mean for someone to render her final breath in inevitability of global politics. And I understand what he means. I know he means that war is callous and unforgiving, that a militant can surround himself with a dozen women and children so that the pilot must decide between a target and the soft ache of his own heart's detonation. I do not misunderstand the cruelty of war, but I regret the way we talk about its casualties, how their lives become tacit admonitions, how the tyranny of a border made out of thin air means bombs are only dropped on one side of it. But I too have felt the empathy corrode inside the most cavernous parts of me, have taken the quarters from my pocket and used them to cover my collusion. Who among us has not used spare change to ornament our contrition, laid a garland of rations atop the bodies of names we do not know? And I'm not sure what it means for us not to be the one to fire the bullet but to behave as if the bullet always belonged in that chest and not our own.